All right, it is time for PL Express. We have missed our PL Express with the international break coming, but we are back and we have lots to talk about as well. And there's a big managerial feel to today's PL Express as well. One of which is a, is a rumour that we're seeing going around. So we're going to start there today in that we're asking if Graham Potter to Manchester United would make sense. He's said to be in the picture for the United job if Eric Ten Hag is sacked. Napoli are also said to be in, interested, but obviously we want to focus on it here because we know he has Premier League pedigree as a manager. What do you make of this talk? Wow. I mean, I, he seems tainted to me. Not that I don't like second chances because he deserves one. He's going to get one. But I mean, isn't that sort of the same story, right? I mean, when he came from, you know, Brighton to Chelsea, that were a little bit in turmoil, uh, not a little bit. I mean, in terms of ownership and number of players coming in and dealing with some big egos still. Uh, and you look at a Manchester United and it's a similar story. I mean, Manchester United, I don't want to say it's in turmoil, but to some degree, the ownership, I mean, the, 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 the relationship between the fans and the Glazers and and some of the big names still that exist there. Uh, uh, so I just don't know that this is ideal for for Graham Potter. Why why would you leave Chelsea after that experience, taking some time off, and not think to say, you know what, when I do return, I want to make sure that at the very least I'm going to a team that's uh, uh, very organized, not under tremendous amount of pressure, where where. The expectation, expectations are going to be immediate, even though as a coach, I know that it's not going to be that easy. So I just think logically it doesn't make any sense for both Manchester United and to be quite honest, uh, for Grand Potter. OK, it's interesting. Yeah, when I saw that, because what would be a good fit for Potter then if he was to come back to the Premier League as a manager when you're talking about avoiding a club like that, like the, the Chelsea's and the Manchester United? Oh, now you put me on the spot. Never thought about it. It wasn't in the script. Well, um, I know, I I'm thinking any... about it as you speak, because I'm thinking, obviously, there's no there's no fear at the moment with the Newcastle job, but I'm thinking he'd probably be a good fit at a club like Newcastle. You know, when you're thinking about where he could fit, maybe the Spurs job before Ange Postacoglu got it. Obviously, there's no worries about that. They're like, what's, what's a good place that he would land that would be somewhere where there maybe wouldn't be as much pressure? Yeah, well, the, there, is, there isn't one at the moment, uh, right? I mean, it does, you know, I mean, he obviously wants to play a proactive football. And I mean, if there's an... I have a feeling if there's going to be an opening, it's going to be a building job with less expectations. So the moment you start seeing uh, maybe some teams uh, looking over their shoulder towards relegation, by the way, I keep saying that, he keeps proving me wrong, but I believe, you know, West Ham may be a team where, because, you know, David Moyes, I mean, you look at that West Ham dropping off, although they've done a, he's done a tremendous job winning a trophy in Europe uh, last season. I mean, they looked all right, but based... Uh, on lot, some results, they're kind of dropping in the table. But I think it's a team that's on the up. And I think if if West Ham struggle and are at the wrong end of the table again, and if they decide that maybe we need something more expensive, because it's not that I'm against David Moyes, but I think people would agree with me that they're just waiting for that next step, for somebody a little bit younger with brighter ideas committed to attacking football a little bit more. I could see that in time, that that would be a good spot for Potter. Okay. Well, we'll keep our eye on it, obviously. The managerial merry-go-round always goes on. Speaking of which, we're also seeing a lot of talk of if Pep Guardiola is to leave Manchester City, Roberto De Zerbi being the man who would come in and be the perfect fit at Manchester City if Pep were to go. Do you think he actually would be the best fit? I thought we started this rumor a couple of weeks ago. That's the that's the only place. Well, obviously, start all the rumors in the football yes, world. Right? So I, I, thought, I thought again, this was more of a fact. Uh, uh, it, 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 look, I mean, time, it's all about timing. Uh, if Pep Guardiola decided to leave at the end of the season, done and dusted. There's no, uh, there really isn't anybody else. Not just because they like each other, but and, and respect each other and, and play similar football. But I think like Pep. The Zerbi is the only one that, in my mind, is as innovative as Pep, if you know what I mean. He's not afraid to take risks, and he's not afraid to try different things and players, uh, it, challenging players to put them in difficult situations, in new positions, and making them believe that they actually play can play great. Because, you know, if all of a sudden you go, 
okay, you know, Bernardo Silva may not be a great example when Pep put him in a left back in the Champions League game. But, but you know, if he continued with that, I am sure Bernardo Silva would have played well, even though initially would say, come on, boss, that's not a place for me. The Zerbi is the same sort of a, 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 play, a manager that would, I think, find different ways to, to have players as individuals and team to go to the next level. So that's why I think these two are being put together because I can't think of anyone else right now that could come close to Pep Guardiola because it's going to be a void. It's going to be a same void for Manchester City as Sir Alex Ferguson was for Manchester United, as Arsene Wenger was uh, for Arsenal. And then we can probably think of a couple of different uh, managers are, around Europe. So it, it absolutely makes sense, but the timing. Yeah, obviously, this is the time. Do you know what else you could add to that list that I feel De Zerbi definitely has? That intensity and so demanding as well. Yeah. He feels like that kind of football obsessive that Pep Guardiola is too. And I feel yeah. like they're going to need that because yeah. otherwise it might be too much of a drop-off, right? Okay, let's talk about the top two teams, two of the top two teams in the Premier League right now. They are the only two unbeaten teams in the Premier League right now. And they are both the North London teams as well in Arsenal and Spurs. But who do you think has been the better of the two so far? <laughs> Uh, I mean, you, you have to say Spurs because it was so unexpected when a new manager coming in like that. Uh, uh, look, I mean, you know, uh, I think Arsenal has done a tremendous job. Just getting over Manchester City was tremendous. By the way, uh, that game against Chelsea, even they were totally outplayed and actually outcoached uh, uh, because I think po uh, Poch outcoached uh, Mikel Arteta in this game. But there's a lot to be said about them coming back in a game like this uh, because, you know, I mean, last season they've done that a little bit, but it wasn't so long ago where nobody would give Arteta or, or or Arsenal in general, a chance to play as bad as they did, lose as late as they were against Chelsea, who were, in my opinion, totally dominated. If it wasn't for a gift from Sanchez, Arsenal rules that game. So there's a lot to be said about Arsenal coming back in this game, but it's kind of hard to go against Ange Postecoglou and Spurs because, I mean, they're top of the league. They've played some tough games and they've gotten the results. There and it, it's it kind of would be easy for me to say, well, look at James Madison, which by the way has changed this team going forward. And the idea of of playing the way the fans want him to play, the way the players like Son want to play, and it's easy to go James Madison and all the goals, and they're missing Harry Kane, and look, they're scoring in so many different ways. But I think it's defensively what he's done with this team that's even more impressive because they are the second best defensive team. Well. City seven, they have eight. I think there's another team that conceded eight. But look at Vicario. I mean, the Google Google probably went down the moment Vicario came to London, right? Because nobody really paid attention to where he was playing, what sort of a goalkeeper he was. And then today, when we're talking about Robert Sanchez being terrible, Raya at Arsenal, my goodness, was that a good idea? Onana at Manchester United, the, the ball playing goalkeepers. Here you have Vicario, who's excellent. The back four, Mickey van der Fen. I mean, show me a better center back right now. Top three in the Premier League, easily uh, the way he's he's played so far. I look at Udogi. I mean, his upside and his ceiling. Where is it right now? Another player that came uh, from a modest side in Serie A that's just playing better and better every game. Uh, I think Romero, we don't have to talk much about him because he is world class. Uh, but even the young midfield, I mean... Uh, in Zard, the way he plays, and uh, Bisuma, he was suspended, but obviously has found his feet uh, after a year of being there. So, so it's hard not to say that it's Spurs at the moment. Now, the difference is going to be staying power. If that's what I was going to ask you. Do you think they can keep it up? Well, that's just it. If you ask me that, then I think Arsenal obviously haven't gone through a season where they push Arsenal. I mean, the Manchester City to a limit right now. What I just said, the way they've dealt with that Chelsea game, where it was maybe the worst Arsenal we've seen in I don't know how long, uh, they found a way, uh, which is very, very important. Uh, they're, they're, they're tested. They've gone through all the emotions with Mikel Arteta when he started, when they finished in eighth place two years in a row, when we almost fired Mikel Arteta with everybody else to kind of finishing fifth and now last season and a great start to this season, it has to be said. Uh, longer term, I go with Arsenal. But at the moment, I don't want to take it from... I could easily have made a case for Arsenal, even though Spurs are first. But I don't have the heart to take it away from Spurs. Why? They're top of the league for now a while. 
Oh, well, we put out a poll actually on ESPN FC. Tens of thousands have voted already on this one to ask who you would rather play under. Would it be Ange Postacoglu or would it be Mikel Arteta? Mm. So here are the results so far. 55% of you would rather play under Big Ange, 45% under Arteta. What about you though, Janish, and why? Oh, uh, I, I mean, look, Ench seems like a great guy, but but I think, you know, he doesn't suffer false easily, right? But behind that smile, I mean, there's sternness. Uh, it's not easy. So is Mikel Arteta. I think the longevity of that, of that process for Mikel Arteta. A and again, I mean, soft spot for Ench for a long time, soft spot for Australians in general. Uh, so I think my first instinct was Ench, but I just have a feeling just watching Mikel Arteta, seeing what he's taken on for Pep Guardiola, seeing how he's moving uh, this team right now, seeing how he's building. He's built a very, very young team on the back of a legend that was uh, 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 Arsene Wenger. Just slightly, I have to agree with the poll, but just. Just. Okay. Maybe we'll revisit that one because we know mm -hmm. that maybe... You could change your mind as the season goes on. But I can see why you would pick Arteta here, especially with your admiration for Pep and obviously mm. what he can emulate from that coach. OK, this is never a nice one to do, but we have to do it. We'll start with the nice part of it. Biggest surprise of the season for you so far. You know what's coming after that as well, don't you? Uh, yes. Biggest surprise. I mean, that could be positive, right? I mean, I have to I have to talk about James Madison. I mean, I knew how good he was. Uh I will initially I was shocked where he ended up because I think there was a need for him saying, you know, Manchester United, even Liverpool. If you watch Liverpool against Everton, I mean, that lack of creativity still exists. I I know that Jurgen Klopp lo loves the, you know, great engine room and, you know, he's wanted without that type of player per se. Uh, but I think what James Madison's doing immediately, he's turned, I mean, he's one of the big, other than defense, he's the reason why we're, we're not really thinking about Harry Kane, right? Uh, uh, not just the pure numbers, but that, that creativity that was missing while Conte was there and, and Mourinho. So even though I admire him as a, as a, a player, I mean, from the off, he he's turned around the, the team. I mean, he really, as much as you want to talk about Ange, uh, I think you have to talk about James Madison. And I just didn't think that he was going to have such an impact immediately where you can see his footprints in on every play. Uh, and we saw in the last game, I mean, I can't think of an, of a game where there wasn't two or three or four plays where it just, it just clicks, that transition, the link between the back and the front. Uh, Absolutely tremendous. Yeah, you could quite literally put Spurs overall in that whole department, right, for the biggest surprise of the season so far. And, and the only crazier part is people I see in the English speaking media, and I'm going to throw this in because it's a, in my head, uh, it, it is, you know, I've listened to some respectable people thinking that they are better without Harry Kane, which is absolutely. I mean, just imagine Harry Kane in that team with, with James Madison on top of that, right? I mean, think about I, I know that maybe, you know, without the money for Harry Kane, they wouldn't have been able to. But just assuming that it was possible, I see a lot of people thinking that they are better without Harry Kane. I, I think they're not with that. Bonkers. But, but then on the other side of it, maybe it's been something that Ange can use to say, let's prove that we can do this, that has given them that challenge, if you know what I mean. That, that still played into the story of this season so far? That other yeah, people I, I are think, trying to step up and prove themselves in his absence? Oh, well, I think he can say that to the players, but privately he'd probably go and, yeah. yeah <laughs> I yeah, wish I, I had him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want Harry Kane in this side? Yeah, Richarlison had a couple of chances that Harry Kane puts away eyes closed, right? I mean, like massive chance. No, I mean, of course you would have loved to have them both. Well, they don't need to worry just yet. Anyway, that's for sure. Not where they are in the table. But let's talk about the biggest letdown of the season for you so far in the Premier League. Marcus Rashford, and it's probably not even close. And, and I don't enjoy saying that. Remember, like you probably remember a month ago, we were talking about it. If you put uh, Marcus Rashford on some big, big teams, could it, you know, like Barcelona, Real Madrid, he would be fine, right? But that, that's also uh, his undoing, in my opinion, right? Because he needs a special... It seems to me that he needs a special environment in order to be good. Uh, we all know that he's been extremely inconsistent, but when things are going well, 
like last season uh, to a degree when Ecton Hag came over and turned uh, things around. Uh, he was thriving. And now I don't know if it's soft mentality. I don't know where it is, but I expect him with the, with the talent that he has. Uh, I Look, I, I think he's a great player, but maybe I should say he's a very good player because in order to be great, you have to have the ability to carry the team when things aren't do, uh, going very well. And, and there is some softness in mentality wherever it is in his case because I look at him from game to game. He's, by the way, not the only one on that team. Uh, you look at Manchester United and, you know, McTominay uh, leads the team in scoring with three and, and I don't know who's even second. I can't even think of it. Ericsson has one goal and Bruno has two goals. I mean, I could have a go at him a little bit, but I, I think he's doing a much, much better job than, than, than Rashford. So Marcus Rashford, incredibly disappointing. And if you do become a product of what's around you, though, yeah, I mean, isn't he part of the reason they were doing well last season? Wasn't he leading that and it wasn't just what was around him? Yes, of course. Yeah, you can spin that. I mean, there's always two sides of the story, uh, of course. But uh, 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 do we not think that he, sh I mean, how many goals does he have in the Premier League? Right? I mean, do we not think that he, he should be doing much, much better? Uh, look, not, not to say he's not a very good player, but you, you know, when you look at last season and this season, the biggest so far, it's only nine games in.